Starboy by Conquering Mega Eagle. Oh, right, folks, how are you doing? All right, <laughs> good, excellent. Um, so I want to make some dimples. Uh, what are, what are dimples? Uh, everyone's everyone's asking. I'm sure everyone already knows what dimples are, but we'll uh, we'll just try and demonstrate on a bit of papier uh, what I'm on about. Yeah. Whoop. So uh, if you've got a bit of sheet sheet metal, um, there's a number of reasons to do this. Uh, but basically, a, a dimple consists of uh, a hole hole in a bit of sheet metal. There's a hole. Uh, <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. I'm using a purple. Oh, you can just about see that. Not very well. Let me find another pen. Okay, what what what's a dimple? Um, what a hole in a bit of metal. Cross section of that is uh, will look something like that, won't it? You know, hole in a bit of metal. And a dimple is uh, when you when you take that hole and just create something of a flange. Um, so. You know, it, it dimples a term that's generally used on smaller holes, and uh, and what um, you know, the larger lightning holes and stuff like that. Uh, it, you know, it's quite common in aircraft structures, uh, in the ribs and, and frames and that. Uh, we we you cut a hole in it to lighten it slightly, but the the main purpose is to strengthen it. Um, the reason I'm doing the dimples, the reason I want a dim um, is for foot plates and foot pedals on my dump truck yeah uh, it's quite common on plant machinery you'll see it on tread plates and that and floors uh, where it'll be that way up and the the edge of the metal there coming into contact with your boot gives you a lot of grip yeah and it, there's somewhere for the mud to go as opposed to checker plate I mean I like checker plate don't get me wrong but uh, just like the treads in your shoes like checker, checker plate can be overwhelmed with uh, mud basically um, so it looks nice on a Land Rover right? don't get me wrong and you probably wouldn't want dimpled dimpled tread plates all over the bonnet of your Land Rover but um, but what uh, the the dimpling seems to be a lot more effective and that's that's you know pretty much the industry standard isn't it like if you've seen a, a small bit of plant equipment so that's that's what we're going to do there's a few different tools uh, that can be used for for making um, flange rounds like that um, sometimes there's a there's a roller. If you've got a very large hole, then um, uh, you ro you roll the roll the dimple onto it. Um, I haven't actually used them, but they're basically you know two sets of rollers like that, and you you pull it around the pull it around the hole, and it puts the flange on it. Um, then you can use a joggler as well. They're they're pretty much just a just a pair of pliers, but you get you get them so they make uh, different shapes. So you can get jogglers that will make a, a sort of dog leg. So you can overlap two bits of metal and have it flush on one side, or you can have them where they set uh, 45 degrees, which is what you'd use on a on a on a dimple hole. Um, oh, probably a much larger one though, not a not a small dimple hole because you need to be able to get the pliers inside really. And what's the other type? The the other type is the is the type that we're going to make today, which will just be a, a simple press tool. So we'll have a male and a female part, and it's got a pin on the male part, which locates in the original hole. So we have to start off with a hole in the sheet steel, and then the the female part is just the reverse of that. You sit your, your piece of metal on top with a hole, and on larger ones they they've got a, a screw in them to pull the two pull the two halves together. But because uh, I'm only doing little holes and I want it to be a nice quick operation, we're just going to make it solid, and I'm going to hit it with a hammer, and that will make the dimple. Yep. There there is another sort. There's the 
the, the dimpling pliers, the stuff that we use on countersunk rivet holes and that, uh, and they're they're quite similar to this, I suppose. But rather than rather than hitting it with a hammer, they're you know because they're made for very small holes, like eight from three thirty two holes. Uh, you just squeeze them with a plier, and it will it will make the make the little dimple. It's a much better way of doing things than countersinking because you normally normally put the two sheets of metal together, dimple them together, so they're kind of you know. It gives them a bit of a gives the joint a bit of strength because they don't want to don't want to slide apart. Um, and on top of that, you don't remove any material. So uh, you know, if you think you're countersinking a hole um, on an aircraft skin, especially something that's uh, pressurised, for instance, if you countersink it by removing material, you you're actually um, you know reducing the thickness of it there quite significantly where you've got the fastener and. You know, it famously caused lots of problems for the uh, De Havilland Comet, didn't it? Like the whole thing fell apart through fatigue when it um, when it when it pressurised and that because uh, people hadn't been making large pressurised fuselages before and they were using the same same countersinking processes that they'd always done on on smaller aircraft. Either way, we're going to build that type and hit it with a hammer. Uh, so it's mostly a, a little bit of a lathe job today, but we'll just. Uh, We'll just make a, a video on it so you can see what I'm up to. So um, I got my, my two parts made up. Uh, there's a male and female there, and there's a bit of slop in between them, yeah. And that's that's not just because of my my lathe skills. It's intentional. So we got the thickness of the metal to think about, yeah. And I'm sure there's some mathematical way of calculating all this, but basically what I did is, uh, you know, that's not quite a, a male impression of the inside of that. Um, the chamfer's a bit short, so it's the same angle, they're both 15 degrees and this is a, a much steeper angle than you'll normally see on anything other than tread plate because the idea of tread plate is you want to bend the metal up towards your foot um, as opposed to lightening holes where you just want to have the flange there um, so this is, yeah, I think normally they're about 45 degrees or whatever but uh, this is 15 degrees off the 90 degree which means it's Hang on, 75, is, this, is that right? I don't know, it doesn't really matter anyway. Either way, it's a very steep angle. Yeah, seven, no, never mind. So, uh, I've already taken the liberty of drilling a hole in this bit of metal, 
Um, probably should put my spectacles on. And I finally finally found a use for my um, my crappy little vice that's gone rusty. And the idea is that we're just going to stick that on there and then knock the absolute snot out of it with a with a lump hammer and hopefully it won't stick and hopefully we'll have a sensible dimple well it's, it's definitely stuck isn't it oh no not that badly okay all right Oof. let me just tap this out Maybe I, should, maybe I should hit it again first. Maybe I should just hit it harder. Clip rock! Oh, yeah, kind of. I mean, that's, that's effectively what I'm aiming for. Uh, it's just not anywhere near as neat and tidy as I need it to be. Okay, so it kind of looks like, like a bullet hole, doesn't it? Um, but it's it stood the metal up on end, which is what we want. So, you know, we've got a, an edge there now, as opposed to a flat, so that'll, that'll give my boot something to grip. Um, I'm just gonna carry on hitting it. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, this is one of the things I was worried about, uh, using mild steel. Um, Let's just see what happens. I don't think this is going to stand up to it. Maybe it's too rough. I didn't take my time machining it because uh, I had no idea whether this is going to be, whether I'd have to take more material off. But we'll just uh, give it another couple of taps and find out. Okay, that's actually a lot better now. Um, it's not centered and the metal around it is distorting slightly. But um, what well, we could probably live with that to be honest I'm going to have another couple of goes and see what happens um, I might try and hold this somewhere and just hit it with a much bigger hammer I think that's definitely the way to go okay so I had a little think um, first thing first thing I did was just round over the 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 corner on the on the female part because that's obviously left the uh, quite a quite a mark I mean I don't mind the mark to be honest but um, that's probably why it's gone a bit um, bit boss eyed uh, and the other thing I'm going to try this time is a bit of lubrication yeah There's no way that could ever hurt I'm going to find some goggles though because because what I don't fancy getting the mouse jizz in my eyeballs and I don't know what I've done on my goggles. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really annoying. Yeah, I, I got these, they're, they're cheap, like, um, I think they're just a quid each. Uh, but because they're completely clear, <laughs> they can be right in front of me, but I don't find them. Which is a bit silly. Okay, well this is tight, isn't it? What am there then? Let's just let's just do it, go for it and see what happens. This is probably a bad idea. We'll stick a bit in there as well. I don't know. I think I think you need to find a better lube. Hey, that is beautiful. That's worked much better, isn't it? You know what? No. Should we call that a? Should we call that a day? Shall we call that a day? That's worked quite nicely. That's a uh, well. Let's let's try it like that a few more times, and if it's repeatable, I'm gonna be happy with that. Look how how nice and even that is compared with the first one. Yeah, very uniform all the way around. What a difference! A little bit of knocking the corners off and uh, and some lube, mate. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try some squirty lube though. Just because I think it might stick a bit better. Although I'm not, not complaining about that at all to be honest. But no, you know what? Bollocks. We'll go with the uh we'll go with the jizzy stuff. I 
really need a spray bottle. This is good for the lathe and the drill, but with this I'll, I probably want to mist it on, don't I? Hmm. Uneven again, but that might have been me to be honest. Might have been me. I'll take my time. Try and take my time a bit more. Might be because it's on the edge of the material, you know? Or... Or why else? Yeah, I just need to hit it harder on this side. Nah, once it starts going off centre... So, that's been the nicest one so far. And then they're getting worse, <laughs> worse again. Right, so what can we do? What can we do? We got to look at the uh, where it's contacting, I suppose. So it's not getting anywhere near this corner. We we can tell that by the by the sort of radius we got on there. Um, Yeah, maybe I'll try and do it in the vice. I need to make some more holes in this bit of metal. Okay. Next test. The vice. Man. How can you drill a triangular hole with a round drill bit? Always a... Uh, Always puzzles me. Okay. Oh, what a lovely voice. Hmm. Okay. Okay, well that's interesting. It's nowhere near closing up. Yeah? So, what does that tell me? I don't know. Not a lot. So, well, yeah. I think I'm going to take a little bit more material off of the female one. Um, is that the right thing to do? Yeah, so I open this up a bit. Open this up a bit to keep the 15mm angle but um, reduce this wall thickness here. So the taper itself will run a bit longer. Um, and maybe increase the, uh, the radius of that round over on the corner. Yeah, okay. So those are the last two I've done. I've switched to WD-40 and uh, what? Um, increased the size of me hole. <laughs> no, I've not. The uh, the bore is the same size, but the um, the major diameter of this cone is larger. This taper is larger, and I put a more serious round over on there. Um, that's working quite nicely now. That is, that is probably good enough. They're, they're quite nice holes, to be honest. They look better from the back than they do from the front, and um, 
you know, in my application, we're going to see them from the front. But is, the, is these two the most recent ones? Let's uh, let's make some more holes and just have another check. Okay, well that's that's lovely and consistent now, isn't it? Um, one, two, three, four, four. These all these four were done with the same uh, same setup, same geometry, or same same bit of fettling, and they have puckered up around the outside. Something lovely. Okay, <laughs> so has this added much strength to this? I don't think so. Um, much rigidity? No. I don't think so. It would certainly stop the centre of this plate from panting, uh, or oil canning, or whatever you want to call it. Um, well, they do look nice on the back, don't they? Especially with that oil on them, eh? <laughs> nice. Sexy. Anyway, um, that's my dimpler. I suppose if I wanted it to, uh, if I wanted it to last, I, I would have to make this out of um, a better steel. This is, a, this is not going to last very long at all. Um, I could weld something on top, you know, like a sort of sacrificial striking plate. Um, I've probably got to do less than a hundred holes, I reckon. Um, maybe I'm pushing it, but I've got the geometry sorted now. Uh, and with the with the enlarged taper here, I don't seem to be doing quite as much damage to the male taper there. Um, so hopefully that won't wear away before I'm finished with it. That's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. <laughs> um, you can obviously scale this up, but you'd need a much bigger hammer. Like right, this is this is probably the uh, probably about the sort of limit you can manage with a two and a half pound lump hammer. Um, but it does make some lovely dimples. Yeah, uh, Ali. Obviously, the mild steel would be fine, perfect for Ali, wouldn't it? But, like Ali's Ali's pretty funny, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's where you got to check. Well, I suppose it's the same with steel, isn't it? You want to use Mild steel, if you don't use mild steel, something bad's going to happen. The same with alley, isn't it? If you're using a um, heat treated alley, um, again, like uh, it'll probably probably start splitting around the edges unless you've uh, done something to it first to soften it up. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'll be I'll be using them on the on the dump truck build. Um, I'm going to make another another smaller metal folder before I get back onto the dump truck because I need both this and the metal folder for the dump truck. Uh, I still haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with the metal folder, um, whether I'm just going to do something cheap that will fit in the vise, uh, quick, not cheap, everything I do is cheap, <laughs> or whether I'll, I'll try and make something that uh, that will be worth keeping afterwards, because obviously if you saw the um, tipper body episode of the dump truck build, um, you might remember it's got a load of fermenting stuff in it at the minute and a chainsaw. Uh, you might remember that I built a monstrous metal folder. I'll leave a link to that video up there or somewhere, somewhere along the top. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's purely for this job. This is the first time I've needed to fold full sheets of um, steel like that, and I can't see myself needing it anytime soon either. So that was just a quick temporary thing, but the uh. If I do something small that I can hang on the wall here, I might make a nice job of it, but I'm just mindful of the fact that the days are getting longer and I should be digging a hole at the minute. All right, <laughs> anyway, take it easy, folks. Um, hope you're well and safe and that. And I'll see you, see you all again soon. Bye-bye.